deadly tornadoes across Tennessee, including a midnight twister in the heart of Music City. Power blast, power blast right there. The tornado is coming. There it is. Go inside, go. The house is shaking. The glass is breaking. It sounds like somebody's shooting a machine gun at the house. Minutes later, an EF4 rips through a nearby town. I started screaming for my wife and kids. He went flying through the air. And when I looked up, our roof was gone. Storm Stories, the next chapter, all new back-to-back -back episodes coming up Sunday night at 7, 6 Central. Well, unfortunately, there is a chance for isolated tornadoes in the Carolinas as severe thunderstorms ramp up today. Dr. Posta, you can tell us what to expect, what exactly is going on. They're having a rough morning so far this morning across portions of the Carolinas, so throwing in the severe weather is just kind of an insult to injury. It doesn't help. That's exactly right. But the good news, Felicia, in some sense, is that the severe weather threat is not really on the high end of the scale. Yeah, there's a chance, as you were saying, of an isolated tornado or two and some winds uh, in some thunderstorms that could reach severe limits. But overall, the odds of a lot of severe weather are really not that great. That's good news. And we've got that chance, though, some chance of severe weather for parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. In the bottom right part of your screen, you can see Charleston, 76 degrees. That's a very warm and humid start to your day. So if you think about warm and humid conditions being at least some of the ingredients that you look for for severe weather, Charleston's got it, and that's why we think Charleston has some chance of seeing severe weather, as do other areas in coastal South and North Carolina. Right now, no severe weather in progress. No severe thunderstorm warnings, no tornado warnings. I like that. Let's keep it that way. I'm not sure it will stay that way because we have things kind of still coming together. We've got a frontal zone here, which is going to really be responsible for, I guess, um, allowing those thunderstorms to have some kind of trigger, some way to get them going. And I think that cold front is moving in this direction into an air mass that's very moist and reasonably unstable. A lot of that moisture, what it does is uh, create a bit more buoyancy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms that do develop in the region. They'll have stronger updrafts. And we do have some of that instability in place across the southeast now, and it will grow a little bit today. And it will be enough to support some pretty big storms. And we'll see, I think, more and more rain, especially out ahead of that cold front in that zone developed today. And some of those storms, as I mentioned, could be severe with the possibility of a couple of tornadoes. Here's our Torcon threat scale. On from one a scale that goes from zero to 10, it's at two. So it's not on the high end of the scale, Felicia, but not exactly zero. So we need to pay attention to that. If you get a warning, take shelter immediately. Back to you. That's right, Dr. Postel. Thanks so much. And the worst of Ada is gone for those parts of Tampa Bay area, but flooding could still be an issue for some places today. Tim Dudley joins us live to talk about that. He's the director of the Hillsborough County Emergency Management Agency. Thanks so much for being with us, Tim. Let's start out with how much flooding is there across the county and uh, what ways, if any, have you uh, had your response impacted by that flooding? Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we, we definitely feel blessed and thankful this morning here in Hillsborough County, Florida. Our early assessments is that we feel that the damage has been minimal. However, we're currently assessing our county and we have teams out doing assessments. So I know you said you're still assessing. Have you seen any uh, reports of damage coming from the area? Uh, we've had minimal uh, damage coming in. Uh, we've checked with our 911 call center and our citizens information center as well. We've had reports overnight, some trees down. We've had some major roadways uh, closed uh, with some uh, minimal flooding. Courtney Campbell Causeway, Bay Shore, uh, some lanes closed on Howard Franklin Bridge. So uh, we've definitely been blessed here. Uh, we've seen about uh, 2,100. Uh, around 745 this morning, customers without power. So right now, what are the top concerns that you guys are out handling? Uh, right now, we want to make sure that we get a, a good, accurate picture. Um, if any impacts here in the county, uh, we want to make sure all our citizens are safe, uh, that they're out of harm's way, and we'll continue to assess uh, any flooding or major roadways or low-lying areas. Uh, but water seemed to be receding, and the storm continues to weaken and move out of the uh, Hillsborough County area. And quickly, Tim, you mentioned it. It is weakening and moving out, but now that Ada has passed, what do you want residents to know? I uh, want ready residents to know that hurricane season, it starts June 1st, 
and it doesn't end to November 30th, and you have to stay vigilant. Um, you you got to have a plan. You got to have your emergency kits, and you got to know where you're going in and with. We call it an evacuation. This storm here, it moved fast, had a lot of wind, caused a little bit of surge and flooding. So it can happen anytime in between June 1st and November 30th. So we have to stay ready. Yeah, and better to be ready and prepared. Well, thanks so much for being with us again. That's Tim Dudley, the director of the Hillsborough County Emergency Management Agency. Well, the wild, wild west is rainy and snowy right now. How this may help against the wildfires, plus where we could see up to eight inches of rain and a couple feet of snow. That's coming up. Let's take a look at the flash flood warning ongoing in Charlotte right now. Really rough situation across a huge chunk of the Piedmont, Charlotte, Winston, Salem, Raleigh, Durham. You guys are all dealing with flash flooding. We're going to talk more about this coming up. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. We're covering the aftermath of Tropical Storm Ada here in St. Pete Beach, here in the Tampa Bay area. And you can see on the street what was left behind and we're seeing this all over. We came up, we came down from Clearwater Beach through Madeira and all the streets have debris in them because of the uh, fresh water flooding and also the Gulf and Bay and that storm surge. Uh, we saw some places where they were using uh, the Bobcats to get the sand out of the parking lots and the streets. Let's talk to the owner of the house because he's been here since 2004. This is Steve Gordon. Steve, thanks for joining us this morning. Hi there. Hey, and tell us uh, how fast the water came up. Just give us a play-by-play. -play. We got hammered all day, and, and the winds were really high, and we were getting hit with squall lines. But as the high tide started coming in about 6 o'clock, the water started going up. It went over the seawall at about 7. The waves were breaking in my backyard, and between 7.30 and 9.30, the water came up about three feet and so right here where i'm standing was about three feet deep the road was five feet deep wow and when they say storm surge they really mean it this water doesn't just come in it rushes in and it really caught me off guard i had no idea i've been here 16 years mm -hmm. we've been through hurricanes i was running around trying to get everything off the floor the water was a quarter inch of going in my house. So it went and, into your garage uh, there. The, wa the water was six inches deep in my garage. I went out to check on the weather. I opened up my garage door and all this water, a wave came in my garage. I was going, oh my God, what is this? I went out my front door. This entire road was underwater and it was just just crazy. And that's water from the Gulf of Mexico uh, or the, the Bay. What happens is for our area, Pinellas County, is if we get a storm out to the west, let's say 50, within 50 miles, the winds on the east side of that storm hammer us with squall lines, plus the wind blows all the water into the bay. Got it. So the bay floods, Bogusiega Bay is a smaller bay from Tampa Bay. It all fills up with water, and then when it had, combines that with a high tide, everything goes underwater. And it, it, it's a real, pro a real problem. And, this is just exacerbated because of climate change. I know people don't believe it, but I've been living here for 16 years and I built my dock. The water in the bay is up five to six inches since I've been here because I put those boards in. Originally, they were dry. Now they're wet 75% of the time. So we're just lucky this didn't happen in August or September when the water in the Gulf is warmer we would have gotten even an extra three feet of water. But because the water was cooler, it didn't 
get us as bad as it could have, but any any storm that comes by Pinellas County um, and, and Manatee County out in the Gulf to the west of us within 50 miles is going to cause major damage. And I just am so grateful. A lot of my neighbors got two feet of water in their house. Mm -hmm. um, all I did was get my garage flooded and get scared, but it was like, I'm just so grateful and I feel bad for all the people that got flooded out. We appreciate your story and we're happy that you're okay and every, everybody's okay. It's just the... It's just it's property damage. Property and, damage and, that can be replaced. It, re it reminds you that, that the, the best the best meteorologists can do is take their best guess of and and it's really normally close they didn't anticipate a stall a three-hour stall in the gulf yesterday so that's what built up this water if it would have kept moving at the rate that it was going we would have been mild minor damage but because it had a three-hour stall between three and seven o'clock or whenever that was mm -hmm. it just filled the bay full of water and made things really bad but i'm just grateful that i that you know it could have been much worse thanks for sharing your story okay. with the weather Thank channel steve gordon here at st pete beach wow uh 16 years dr postel never seen the water this high uh here in uh the tampa bay area and we've seen other neighborhoods too that went through the same issue we've been driving around the water for the most part has receded across the whole area, but it's the uh, leftover mud and debris. And as Steve mentioned, some of the water actually got into the homes in this neighborhood. Yeah, and the good news is, Mike, is that we're dealing with Ada, which is weakening rapidly, and most of the heavy rain now has moved out over the Atlantic and will not come back into play for uh, most of the uh, areas in the southeast. The vast majority of the bad weather left with Ada is going to remain out over the water. There it is right now at 45 miles per hour in the wind speed, moving north-northeast at 15. And if you do the math, let's say it's 10 miles southwest of Jacksonville, it's probably within about two hours or so before it is indeed back out over the Atlantic Ocean. And it will likely stay that way. It's not going to make another landfall, we don't think. But certainly some of the peripheral impacts will assist the cold front that's coming in with some additional rainfall in parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. Of course, we'll have much more on that. But I do want to bring the point here that we have another area to watch in the Caribbean Sea that has a pretty good chance of turning in, yes, to a tropical depression or our next name storm. And I do believe it's going to happen, and it's probably going to happen in the next, say, couple of days. 90% chance of Invest 98L being our next name storm on a path that's familiar, that's unfortunately going to be heading toward Central America. We'll be right back. Where goes my building? There goes my building. There goes my building. It'll catch on the tree. It'll catch somewhere. No. Don't find a hot spot in there. There goes my building. Breaking news, this is building. new video of emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredell County, North Carolina. And if you didn't hear the woman clearly, she said uh, there goes her building and you can see it there that uh, shed there being washed away by this uh, flowing water. And that's why we remind you over and over again that the power of water oftentimes is underestimated. That could easily sweep you off your feet and sweep you away as well as uh, floating your car. We have this flash flood warning ongoing in the Charlotte area, Huntersville, Rock Hill included in that. And we've got about an hour left on this flash flood warning. We've had several inches of rain falling as we've had rain just setting up uh, over and over. It's what we call training. When you get this area of rain and those uh, showers and storms kind of continue to flow over the same places for uh, a quite amount of time. That's called training and that oftentimes leads to flooding, which is what we're seeing this morning across a huge chunk of the Piedmont. The Carolinas absolutely soaked. Uh, the D.C. area also dealing with that rain. Some very heavy rain moving through portions of Virginia. The D uh, Del Marva Peninsula also very soggy this morning. Uh, so guys, it's a, it's a wet morning. I can't stress enough to give yourself some extra time, even if you're headed out, say, in Columbia. We've got that moisture continuing to feed through. Not only do we have some flash flooding, issues. We've had water rescues, uh, water over major roads. 
but then also uh, just the water falling from the sky period the rainfall could cause you to hydroplane and that's an issue. Well tropical downpours making for a dangerous situation in North Carolina as you've just seen those emergency crews busy right now with several water rescues because of flooding. Kent Green joins us on the phone with an update. He's the director of fire services and emergency management with the fire marshal's office. Thanks for being with us Kent. I know you have a busy morning. What can you tell us about some of the water rescues that you've done so far? Well, in Idaho County, we've done uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 rescues, some of those from cars, some of those from structures that the floodwaters were encroaching upon, uh, some as high as uh, the windows of the structures. And Ken, uh, any roads in particular that you want to tell people to avoid in that area right now? Typically, in the northern half of the county is where our problems uh, are occurring. Uh, we've got about 20 to 25 roads that are closed. DOT is working to get barricades set up. The fire departments are uh, temporarily manning those uh, to keep people from driving through the rising waters. Uh, and then we've got about uh, three or five, three to five motor vehicle accidents as well that have closed down some major roads due to hydroplaning or uh, visibility issues. So, do you have any evacuations uh, underway right now? We do not have any evacuations. Uh, one of our ele elementary schools is closed uh, just due to the proximity of the floodwaters. Um, we do have a campground in an adjacent county. It's right on the county line where 31 people were evacuated. Uh, unfortunately, five are unaccounted for, and searching is still underway for those. And you just hate to hear that, Kent. Uh, obviously, the dangers from the flash flooding, we know that. But what other issues are unfolding because of this flooding? Well, I think the visibility is an issue. Um, the heavy downpours are causing um, visibility to be limited, especially on the interstates. Uh, just asking people to slow down, travel only if you have to, um, and stay tuned to local media uh, for reports of where to and where not to go. Yeah, all uh, very important advice this morning. Thanks for being with us. Again, that's Kent Green with the Fire Marshal's Office. A dangerous situation unfolding as this tropical moisture continues to flow in uh, across the Carolinas. Now, speaking of tropical moisture, Ada whipped up southwest Florida with that heavy rain, but then also storm surge, mainly under the cover of darkness. It triggered gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour across the Tampa Bay area. Ada has also brought the fourth highest water level at the St. Petersburg gauge with nearly three and a half feet. Now that rain is now moving across central Florida and into the eastern part of the state. Let's take a live look at Orlando, Gainesville and Jacksonville. Ah, not what you want to see when you're talking about the sunshine state, right guys? Very rainy. Expect that rain through the day and wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour. Dr. Posto, you're going to uh, take a closer look at where Ada is now and what can we still expect uh, from those gusty winds? Gusty winds, you're exactly right, Felicia, along the northeast coast of Florida, Amelia Island, uh, Ponte Vedra, just areas in and around Jacksonville, southward through um, Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, some gusty winds of 30 plus miles per hour. But once you get inland, really over north central Florida, there really is not much wind at all, and most of the rain now is moving away. This loop takes us back about, well, since earlier this morning and late last night. And you can see that Ada made landfall here near Cedar Key just after 4 a.m. local time, Eastern time, and is now moving northeastward. It's about, you know, 15 miles or so southwest of Jacksonville. Uh, and most of the weather now is offshore. You can see there's a fairly substantial rain band here. But uh, even still, with most of the rain offshore, some of the areas right along Florida's first coast here are seeing some gusty winds. As I mentioned, Amelia Island, Fernandina Beach, was gusting to 40 miles per hour about an hour ago, now 36. But plenty of other locations along the coast are still pretty breezy. But that will calm down. Once the winds turn out of the west, the wind speeds will come down. Gradually, drier air will come in and the weather will be improved. It's only a couple of hours away. That's really good news. But the problem is we're still dealing with some of the circulation around Ada. There's that pretty big slug of uh, rain and thunderstorms off the coast. It's going to try to work its way toward the north and northwest not sure it's going to get there because there's a front coming in from the other side. It's out here and that's moving in this direction. So it's basically the squeeze play right along the coast. We're going to get some moisture coming in from the Atlantic and that cold front moving in from the west. Both of those will lead still to some heavy rain chances along the coast of maybe Georgia, but more so coastal South Carolina, North Carolina, much like this model suggests. Now, there's a lot of precip here right along the shores and just off the coast uh, later on tonight, uh, but that will be pushed away, I think, pretty quickly as that front 
as a pretty progressive front will be swooping through and bringing in much better weather, certainly by tomorrow and tomorrow evening. Felicia. Thanks, Dr. Postel. So let's talk a little bit more about Ada's surge in the coastal impacts on Florida's west coast. Our meteorologist Mike Seidel joins us live in St. Pete Beach for a closer look at what the storm did there. Uh, Mike, how's it looking? It's looking better this morning. The water has receded. It was surge here in St. Pete Beach. We've got Tim and Deb McLean. They're cleaning up after uh, that water came in and the timing couldn't have been any worse because it came in at high tide last night. Yeah, it did. And then, you know, with the surge and then the wind was coming right at us in the back over the seawall. It was pretty insane. How long have you guys lived here, Tim? Uh, almost seven years. Have you ever seen the water this high? No, this is the, this is the worst and uh, really the prior storms, smaller storms seem to create bigger issues because it sits, you know, and I think that was the big thing today is, um, well, last night, it just sat there and just kept coming and as the timing it always seems to be at night and at high tide yeah so all things considered not bad but this was definitely the worst we've experienced so you have a little cleanup this morning but your house is fine yeah 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 we just got some in there we got about two feet in the garage but you were worried about the garage because of that uh, classic car yeah so that's that's kind of our baby and uh that was a big big concern it probably got up about um well maybe a foot on the rear tires and stuff Whoa. like that so yeah i got a I'll take it out once we're all dried up and spray everything down, get the salt out of it. Uh, so piecemeal, taking a, every little bit here. Did you guys lose power over here at St. Pete Beach? For like a not yeah, real 10 quick. minutes or something yeah, like nothing, that, middle of the night. Speak of. Yeah, nothing no, we speak were really of. lucky. Well, yeah, you are. Your house is fine. You're fine. And yep. I, your neighbors are in I'm pretty good great, shape, too. We're very grateful. Yeah, and this is, this is what we're really seeing around the area is just this cleaning up this the water debris was up to the top of that step my husband's already cleaned it so it was it was getting very close, close. it was getting yeah. very very close very, part of it is i don't know if you talked to the uh, i talked to steve Saint, down the street Saint pete i mean part of this work is to eliminate the biggest problem so if you get water coming from the bay and then it's backing up on the street it i mean talk about nowhere to go right uh, and what's happened they're, they're putting fix, in some kind of drain, drainage around the corner yeah, to at least keep it from coming in before it gets over the seawall so you know the drains below well the water's coming in well before it really needs to and it's been something they've been trying to fix for 10 or 15 years i mean the guy over here has been fighting this battle for a long time they just haven't got to the point yet where it would have helped on this particular storm i think once they do that help. it should alleviate you know, it coming as close into people's houses as it has the last, this particular time. So it was all, all surge. It had nothing really to do with a half a foot of rain. I don't yeah. think the rain was yeah. the was big factor. Surge. I think it was the surge. I think I, I think it was more the surge and it couldn't go anywhere. That's that's what I'm hearing. I think yeah. that makes sense because you're surrounded by water down here. Yeah, yeah we yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, I've lived in Florida my whole life and I haven't experienced anything like I did last night. It yeah. was pretty scary. Well, I'm so happy the water didn't get into the house. Yeah, yeah. so oh are we. Yeah, so and <laughs> that your classic Camaro yeah. is fine. Yes, yes. So. Uh, <laughs> The big things are, are, that are important, we're, we're all good. You're so. good, that's right. <laughs> okay, Tim and Deb McLean, thanks for joining us here on the Weather Channel. And back Great. in Great. Atlanta, Great. they're Great. continuing Great. to monitor the rains from Ada. Felicia, we've had water rescues and flash flooding up in the Carolinas. Give us the latest and follow up on what's in store for the rest of today up the coast. Yeah, just a really messy morning, Mike. Thanks so much. Let's talk about it because the Queen City already absolutely walloped by that rain this morning. You can see the rain running through the streets. Uh, definitely wet roads out there. You want to give yourself some extra time. You don't want to be rushing this amount of rain on already soaked ground could certainly cause you to hydroplane. And then, of course, we have multiple roads underwater. That tropical moisture and a front interacting and that rain is soaking the southeast into the mid-Atlantic. That includes places like Raleigh, North Carolina and D.C. Taking a live look there, you can see uh, certainly we have the uh, drops on both of these cameras there. Flooding, flash flooding going to be an issue. As mentioned, we've got a couple different things interacting. We've got that tropical moisture flowing over this area, interacting with the front. And once we get that front to clear out, it's going to be uh, much better, but we've got to deal with this rain for quite some time throughout the day today. So far, we have already had the wettest November day on record in Charlotte, and we just blasted the old record from 1985 out of the water by uh, an inch of rainfall already, guys. And the rain is not done yet. This is a really um, a treacherous situation. Truthfully, we've got uh, water rescues that have been ongoing roads at I-85 in places covered uh, by waterfall, uh, covered by rain. 
So this is just a problem. We've got this flash flood warning ongoing until 11 a.m. Eastern time in that area, and the rain is not letting up anytime soon. All of those little green shaded areas that you just saw, those are flood alerts, and we're just going to continue to see this rain falling until we finally get that front to clear it out. So Wilmington, the um, Hatteras, the Outer Banks, Norfolk, you guys are stuck in the rain for a few more hours until we get that front to sleep through, uh, sweep through. The good news, Charlotte and Raleigh, as we head through, say, the early afternoon in Charlotte and late afternoon into the evening in Raleigh, you guys are clearing out. Wilmington, though, uh, you guys are going to be stuck in it into the early overnight hours. But once that next front moves through, things will be looking much better. Costing. So here's what we have uh, going on. We have flood watches. You can see for places like Charlotte, flash flood watches for Lumberton. That is across the coastal plain, Richmond, down into Myrtle Beach. All of you guys could see some flooding, and that is part of the problem. So Here's what I was talking about. We've got all that tropical moisture in place. You can kind of see that tropical moisture down here around Ada, but here is what's going to help us. All of that dry air that's going to be filtering in behind that next more vigorous front that's going to move through and clear all of this out. So while the front that we have right now is causing us problems, it's helping to enhance that uh, rainfall from that tropical moisture from Norfolk back into Charlotte. Uh, that entire area that I have circled pretty much all under flash flood warnings, um, but once the next front moves through. You guys are going to clear out. The problem is the uh, local rivers, the streams are still going to be swollen. So you have to keep that into mind. Uh, we have a flash flood warning for places like Greensboro as well. Here's what we're looking at as far as uh, rain still to come. This is through tonight. Generally, especially along the coastal plain, we're talking about one to two inches, maybe three to five inches as well, but certainly some locally um, higher amounts of five to eight inches can't be uh, counted out. We've already seen quite a bit of rain there. There's a severe area where watching closely as well as tropical downpours. They push across the southeast, Dr. Postel. So you're going to break that down for us a little bit more. Yeah, Felicia, we do have a chance for severe weather across parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. This afternoon, right now, we don't have any severe. chances are going to be greatest for some of that severe weather. A couple of reasons why. One, we have that front, which is really driving a lot of that rain that's in progress as we speak. That's moving toward the east and southeast like that. But it's running through an air mass that is very, very moist in part because of the circulation around Ada is drawing it northward from the Atlantic and Caribbean. So you have the cold front moving in to an atmosphere that's being it's already very moist, but it's being moistened even more by a tropical cyclone. So there's a lot there to work with if you're that cold front and you want to make thunderstorms. And part of it is the instability. Those areas in yellow and orange are where the atmosphere, even right now, is unstable enough to support severe thunderstorms. Now, there's more to it than that, which is why we're not seeing severe thunderstorms break out everywhere in that zone. But where they develop later on today, where there's enough uh, sun coming out to get those uh, air parcels moving and you get that cold front coming in, we could see some pretty strong storms with even a chance of a tornado. Now, the primary hazard, I think, would be damaging straight line winds, but you can't rule out the possibility of a tornado. We have torcons of two because there is a, actually a decent amount of wind shear as well. So, Felicia, not on the high end of the scale is that tornado threat, but it cannot be dismissed. Back to you. That's right, Dr. Postel. A lot of different factors coming together this morning to make it a messy morning. Again, that flash flood warning ongoing until 11 a.m. in Charlotte, Huntersville, and Rock Hill. Guys, we've already had reports of water over major roads like I-85, so please be careful as you're heading out this morning.
This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long right here on the Weather Channel. There goes my building. There goes my building. There goes my building. It'll catch on the tree. It'll catch somewhere. Breaking news now. This is new video of emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredale County, North Carolina. And if you didn't hear the woman clearly, she said, there goes her building. Uh, this video sh just showcases the power of water. That building just swept away, kind of like nothing. That's what it can do to your car. And of course, that's what it can do to a full grown adult very easily. The power of water is absolutely nothing that you want to underestimate. And a lot of us are dealing with that this morning, not just flooding issues, but uh, hydroplaning issues, accidents uh, across uh, portions of the Charlotte area. You can see here we do have this flash flood warning. It is uh, including Gastonia, Mooresville, Statesville. That is until 11 a.m. local time. We've got that flash flood warning ongoing in Charlotte as well as Huntersville and Rockville. So we have some major population centers under this flash flood warning and you see it here. You're looking at the active radar loop. The rain is not stopping anytime soon. We have this setup of this tropical moisture interacting with this front that's just kind of hanging out and those two things bringing the perfect ingredients together to bring down some of this tropical moisture and keep it flowing over the same places. Uh, you can see here some of that precipitation coming down more than an inch an hour. That is a very high precipitation rate. So not only uh, will the flooding be an issue, but the rain, heavy rain coming down, if you were out and about, it's going to reduce your visibility. It's going to make it easier to hydroplane as well. You can see here certainly uh, 73 up to Ashboro, just absolutely swamped. Raleigh, Durham in a flash flood warning until 2.15. We've got hours left on that flash flood warning there around Raleigh, Durham, as we're expecting this rain to continue falling over the same areas. And not just light rain. We've got several pockets of very heavy rain embedded in here. Some thunderstorms as well moving through the Charlotte area. This is the rain we're still expecting to come throughout tonight. You can see some higher amounts, especially as you get down toward the coastal plain there across the Carolinas. Well, Ada making landfall earlier this morning, striking the west coast of Florida, bringing heavy rain, wind and storm surge to the Tampa area. Boats bashing ashore, waves spilling over railings, streets submerged, stop signs blowing back and forth and emergency vehicles outperforming water rescues. The old port Tampa gauge tipping at its all time high of 3.8. Yeah, record storm surge there. Joining us live from St. Pete Beach to talk about Ada's impacts is our meteorologist Mike Seidel. So Mike, you've been talking to a lot of residents so far this morning. What have they been saying? They are very fortunate. Uh, there was no lives lost, nobody injured. We've had a couple of homes that had water in the homes. Most of the houses on this side, the water got right up to the front door. We just talked to the uh, McLeans before, Tim and Deb, and they're lucky because the water got right up to the top step. But you can see what, what's going on. It's cleanup. This uh, nice young lady over here who's a realtor talking about what's going on in the neighborhood. And she's cleaning up, uh, raking up the, the mess. But she did say that there's water got in the house and they're going to have to do some remediation. We've seen this uh, before with the hurricane tropical storms coming down the street. I want to talk about real quick what they're doing here. And we uh, were talking to Tim earlier. They're putting in a drainage uh, project here. They've been working on this. This is, this is supposed to alleviate uh, some of the water rise. It should take care of two or three feet of the water rise when the water goes over the seawall. So this is a project that continues to be uh, underway. And as you can see, uh, we're waiting for the water to drain off. So Dr. Postel, uh, fortunate here that the water didn't get any higher, but as Steve Gordon told us earlier, boy, it just, the, the surge just came up very, very quickly. Yeah, it's likened to a tsunami, actually, in some cases. Some uh, theoretical uh, modelers do liken it uh, like that, which is very terrifying, in fact, if you've ever been in one. Uh, I have with Katrina, and it was awful. Let's go back now to the current conditions across parts of the tropics. We're not done yet. That's very clear. We have another system to watch across parts of the Caribbean, Invest 98L, and it is going to be moving toward the west over the next few days. It's got some of the ingredients already that you look for when you think of development into a depression or a named storm. We've got a whole bunch of spin kind of concentrated in the middle. Um, now, that doesn't mean the wind is completely making a, a circle, 
but it certainly is kind of rolling around in a counterclockwise fashion, almost that way. So we need to watch this because we have some thunderstorms, we have the atmospheric spin component, and both of those together can uh, create the conditions for tropical development. And we have that condition, I think, almost met with 90% chance of 98L turning into either a depression or a next name storm, that would be IOTA, and it will be moving westward. I do believe we will have IOTA, and I do believe it is a real threat to Central America because if you track it out, you can see that it moves westward on a path, most likely in this way, to impact Central America. Now think about that. Just go back about a week or two. Ada was in the same place, and Ada brought a ton of rain to some of those very same regions. All a part of the story that when you look at the tropical season overall, we are near the end, but we are not done yet. We can't let our foot off the gas. We'll be right back. At the Home Depot. Breaking right now, the Queen City has been absolutely walloped by rain this morning. And you can see that here, rain pouring onto roads. It's definitely been a huge problem. We've had reports of water rescues, of cars stuck in water, um, of uh, even hydroplaning accidents, multiple accidents being reported. So if you are heading out in the Charlotte area, really anywhere across the Piedmont this morning through the Carolinas, you want to give yourself some extra time. Take a look at where we have these flash flood warnings in place right now. Uh, Charlotte, Huntersville, Rockville included until 11 a.m., so about an hour and a half left on that. Now, we should begin to see the rain tapering off as we head toward your lunch hour. However, you're stuck in the rain at least until then. Uh, and then as you head a little bit farther east, the rain will continue to fall for a little bit longer. That's why this flash flood warning for places like Matthews, uh, Mint, Mint Hill, Monroe is until 2 p.m. because you guys are going to be stuck in the rain for a little bit longer and we're certainly going to continue to see those totals adding up not just showers guys but in, in some places we've got some pockets of heavier rain coming down well it's 29 past the hour i'm meteorologist felicia combs along with hurricane expert dr greg postel Ada dumped a ton of rain on Florida's west coast in the last day, and now it's speeding off to the north and east. But Dr. Postel, as we know, those impacts don't just end as soon as the uh, storm pulls away. No, they don't. In fact, uh, we are dealing with still, believe it or not, some impacts from Ada, even though it made landfall about 4, just a little after 4 a.m. this morning near Cedar Key, Florida, right about there. Uh, as a tropical storm with 50 mile per hour winds, we are still dealing with the impacts across northeastern Florida in Florida's first coast. I mean, if you look at uh, overall where the wind is still swirling around, the center of circulation is here. Now, inland, the winds are not that strong. Uh, let's say from Jacksonville, even I-95 on westbound, uh, really the winds are not much of a factor. But right along the east coast, Amelia Island southward through Daytona Beach, we are still seeing some gusty winds out of the south. And in some cases in the last hour or two, we've seen some wind reports over 40 miles per hour. So right now, Fernandina Beach, 21 gusts to 35. St. Augustine, 20 gusts to 25. Ormond Beach gusting to 20. But once the winds turn out of the west and northwest, they typically weaken. And in this case, they will do that because you're getting that wind off the land. And the air will dry out and the weather will improve. The center of circulation is just to the west of Jacksonville and will soon be back out over the Atlantic Ocean. It will carry most of the rain with it offshore and keep it offshore. But there's still some moisture here, some rain off the coast that is going to try to work northwestward. I'm not sure it's going to get there, but certainly the overall flow around Ada is still going to enhance the moisture transport into a frontal zone that's well out to the west that's moving in. So that front that's coming in, its rainfall will be enhanced by Ada and its sort of proximity to it. So you can see that we've got rain much of the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina today through this evening. But here's the good news. It all gets sort of whisked out to sea fairly quickly. A strong batch of westerlies in the jet stream comes in and much better weather improves even as early, Felicia, as late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Yeah, Dr. Pista, we just have to make it through those downpours we're dealing with right now. Those downpours are spreading across parts of the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, as we've seen. Of course, Charlotte, North Carolina, you guys have been stuck in it. D.C., you're also having a bit of a soggy morning. You
You can see the rain coming down in both of those shots. Flash flooding is going to be a big concern as we go throughout the rest of the day as well. So we finally get that next front to sweep through and clear things out. So let's talk about what you're dealing with this morning. I can't stress enough if you're heading out uh, around Charlotte, Winston, Salem, Raleigh, Durham, give yourself a little bit of extra time this morning. That flash flood warning a little less than an hour and a half left for that flash flood warning in Charlotte, uh, Huntersville and Rock Hill. You can see also we continue those flash flood warnings off to the east and those will last a little bit longer. Places like Matthews, Mint Hill, Monroe, uh, your flash flood warning until 2 p.m. local time because you will be stuck in the rain for a little while longer. Now we're seeing some pre precipitation rates or the uh, rate at which the rainfall is coming down very high here, more than an inch uh, an hour near Wingate where we've already seen quite a bit of rain and it's adding up really quickly. And uh, we'll take a look at the raw Durham area down through Sanford Pinehurst. You guys are included in a flash flood warning as well until 215 local time. Uh, after that, you should start to see the rain tapering off from the west to the east, but you're stuck in the rain for a little while longer. You can see that huge swath of rain encompassing a large area of the Piedmont into the coastal plain of Virginia. Delmarva Peninsula has had a soaking morning as well. Now that this orange that you see here, this is drier air. That is good news. That's going to build in behind that front when it finally sweeps through and finally bring this rain to an end. Now we can't rule out the risk for isolated tornadoes today. We'll pinpoint the areas at risk for severe thunderstorms and we'll time out the arrival to your area. That's all coming up. Someday. Good morning. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Ada. We'll get back to the uh, impacts in the Carolinas, the water rescues, the flash flooding. But first, we want to show you a little bit about what's happened here at St. Pete Beach. Ada came by here last night at, <clears throat> excuse me, at high tide, and we have a surge. It took over this whole neighborhood, and we've got Cindy Schuster, who uh, lives nearby, but is the uh, realtor of the house for the couple who lives here. It's an older couple, and the gentleman is in a wheelchair, and I understand it was very, very frustrating for them. Yes, it was. About 8 o'clock last night, they had water pouring in their house. There wasn't much they could really do about it. Um, their entire living room is flooded, the hardwood floors are flooded, um, their washer and dryer that is on pedestals was full of water. Now the water's gone, but you know that it's seeping through the baseboards and up into the drywall. So there's definitely going to be some remediation. Oh yes, definitely. They're, they've called the insurance company, but they're saying it'll be 24 to 72 hours before they can come out. And you've lived here 26 years. How did you make out where you live? And, and give us an idea of what History tells us about this uh, little intersection, this little neighborhood. This is Boca Ciega Isle. I live in the subdivision next door in Bell Vista. Boca Ciega Isle has flooded every time there is a major storm. In 96, so they had four feet of water inside their house. And um, again, now with the just a tropical storm, mm -hmm. again, they've had at least two feet. Um, I sold the house next door to Perry and Nick. They moved here from New York and they had never been through anything like this before. As you know, they have road construction going on here. It's been months. The city came out to put a pump out. At 7 o'clock this morning, there was still like three feet of water in the streets. And I understand the construction is tied into a drainage project to kind of keep the water at least a little bit lower in the future. Exactly. The whole point of this construction is so the neighborhood does not flood. Well, let's get that construction project done. <laughs> I agree. Hopefully by next season. Yes. I mean, who thought we would be doing tropical weather in November? It's just about Thanksgiving and we're still dealing with the hurricane. It's, you know. Let's hope this is it for the season. The one thing, you know, with the rain, the rain will dry out. At least we don't have the fires like in California because the fire destroys the rain, gets everything wet, but it can be fixed. Good point. Good point. Cindy Schuster, thanks for your uh, positive attitude this morning here. You're welcome. It's thanks Saint for being out here. We appreciate it. St. Pete Beach, Dr. Postel. So, you know, everybody's okay, but when you've got an elderly couple in a house and uh, the gentleman's in a wheelchair and the water is pouring in the front door, just imagine uh, what that's like to live through. And I, I was told by Cynthia earlier that uh, he, you know, he felt like he was helpless. He just couldn't help his wife because of his uh, lack of mobility. Yeah, Mike, I mean, the storm surge and the flooding that accompanies it, uh, extremely dangerous hazards when you were dealing with landfall and tropical cyclones. And that's why we always say, heed the advice of the officials. If you're in a storm surge warning area or you're asked to evacuate, please do so. Uh, but uh, the good news is, is that uh, many regions uh, fared okay 
with uh, the landfall of Ada. But we're still dealing with some of the impacts uh, at least related to Ada, and that is severe weather. This is not directly associated with it because Ada is now going to be moving over the Atlantic over the next few hours. But the cold front coming in is going to match up with some of the moisture that Ada has provided to the region, and that will help support some severe weather. Right now, we don't have any in progress in South Carolina and North Carolina. Showers and thunderstorms in Felicia has been talking about all kinds of rain across parts of the Piedmont of North and South Carolina. But we are still waiting on the arrival of this front into an air mass that's going to be getting a bit more unstable even as the afternoon goes on. There is Ada right now, and as I said, it's doing its best to still transport moisture in that direction out ahead of the cold front, which is moving itself in that direction. So you can see there's a squeeze play ongoing, which is giving us all that rain, but it's also going to set us up, I think, for a shot at some severe thunderstorms. As the front moves in, the air mass in spots will get unstable enough to support that severe weather. And you can see right now we're seeing just a lot of rain here, but it's really where it's not raining right now, where I think we got a shot at seeing some bigger thunderstorms later today. That's often how it works, uh, where it's actually less, the weather's less bad now, gives you an opportunity later to see more significant thunderstorm activity because you build up that instability in that way. Torcons are two on a scale that goes to 10, meaning not on the high end of the scale for tornadoes, but some chance of that. I think the primary hazard today is going to be the severe thunderstorm chances with gusty winds uh, moving through the evening hours. This is what one of the forecasts suggests that, let's say, later on this afternoon, I would say along the coast from about Charleston through Myrtle Beach in Wilmington in areas maybe just a little inland, but not much. To me, the severe weather threat is going to be concentrated in that zone along and to the east of I-95. Felicia. Thanks so much, Dr. Postel. Let's talk about what is ongoing in Charlotte, what has been a problem so far this morning, and that is flooding. We do have a flash flood warning ongoing in cities like Charlotte, Huntersville, and Rock Hill until 11 a.m., so we've got a little while longer left on this. Now, the rain is going to begin to taper off, but it is not done just yet. Even after that rain tapers off, though, you are still going to have some uh, standing water in those flood-prone places because we've just seen so much rainfall, and it has added up. Not just there, though. You can see that stretching up through the Piedmont of uh, North Carolina into Virginia as well. Richmond, that rain beginning to move in for you. Raleigh, Durham, you guys are dealing with the possibility for some flash flooding as well. We've got more on this coming up after the break. Good morning and welcome back to St. Pete Beach. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel on the Weather Channel as we cover the aftermath of Ada. It wasn't too, too bad. Uh, we've seen a lot worse this year over in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast, so they came through it in pretty good shape in this neighborhood. Now, last night when the surge came in at high tide, unfortunately, they kind of timed out together. We had about five feet of water where I'm standing. Uh, the city brought out pumps today. In fact, this morning at sunrise, there was still three feet of water. And what they're doing here, they've been working on a long-term drainage project to get the water to back off a little bit, to keep it away from this area when you have storms. And hopefully this will not happen again because they should get this done by next, uh, by next season. Sun is coming out on a, a warm and steamy day here. Temperatures back in the 80s. We've talked to a lot of these uh, neighbors and uh, the folks that live on the street, and most of them are just dealing with cleanup in their yard. But this house had water that went into it with an elderly couple, and it was uh, kind of tenuous when you're in there and uh, the husband's in a wheelchair you just you know it's like 
what do you do? There's no higher ground, but they're okay. There's going to be remediation there as they continue uh, with this project on the street here in St. Pete Beach. So we get through 80 here, but Dr. Postel still major ADA impacts and something you really never want to hear in mid-November, invest. The word <laughs> invest, this late in the season. But we have another invest, and it's, it's, it's closing in on Thanksgiving. You know, that's a really good point. I mean, it is closing in on Thanksgiving, and we're everyone, not just us, but the people who have unfortunately been impacted by these cyclones, the tropical cyclones. Uh, it's a reminder that we're even normally not done with the season. Remember, it officially ends uh, on November 30th. And by that count, we still have some remaining part of the season on average to go. But we know that this season has already broken all kinds of records. Pretty much everything, uh, every record to be broken has been broken. Not quite. But uh, it's just a reminder that even in normal years, we still have a couple of weeks to go. And with 2020 being 2020, you can guess that we are going to be dealing with, I think, more to come. And maybe not just one or two more. We'll see about that. We've gone through Theta. The next name would be Iota. I believe if we do get Iota, let's say in the next couple of days, we'll probably have some even beyond that. I really do believe that. There is Invest 90L right here, 98L. This is the system that we're watching. This is what Mike was talking about, an Invest. It is an area to watch in the tropics that's got a chance of turning into either a depression or a named storm over the next few days. This one has a really good chance of doing it because when you look at it in terms of the amount of spin aloft it's got, it's got a lot of it. That's the shading right there in blue and green showing you that the atmospheric circulation is pretty pronounced in this region. Now the wind's not going around completely in a circle like that. It's more of an open wave still, but that's still circulation and we've got plenty of that. That's one of the things that you look for. The other thing is that it's got a decent amount of thunderstorm activity. So you put all those together and there you go. 90% chance of Invest 98L turning into a depression or a name storm over the next several days on a westward path like that. That path is very reminiscent of what we saw with Ada when it was in the Caribbean Sea. Kind of like this. This is the forecast for Invest 98L probably going to become IOTA. Look at where it goes, Central America, at least according to this model and many others. Imagine that, Nicaragua and Honduras being yet again impacted by a tropical cyclone in a place where we can see very strong tropical cyclone even in this time of year. This is now going back to how much rain was produced by Ada, 30 inches plus in some places. This new system, if the forecasts are right, could deliver yet another several feet of rain to the region. Now, this model shows some places getting over a foot, but we know that those are often underestimates. So it is indeed possible that Invest 98L takes a similar track through the Caribbean like Ada did and unfortunately brings a lot of rain, flooding rain, to the, some of the same places that were absolutely inundated by Ada just one to two weeks ago. Felicia. Thanks so much, Dr. Postel. Let's get to new video now where torrential floodwaters in Taylorsville, North Carolina, are creating a dangerous situation. Look at this flowing water. Uh, you can tell certainly not supposed to be there. Look how fast that wall of water is flowing. You can see cars stuck. We've had several reports of um, uh, water rescues already this morning. Roads covered with water. Also uh, the water rescues that we've been seeing all across North Carolina, South Carolina dealing with flooding this morning as well. So it has certainly been a problem and we continue with a flash flood warning in uh, Charlotte, but also in Iredell County where we saw some flooding video come out a little bit earlier. Definitely a huge problem this morning. Uh, Lincoln County included that's until 11 a.m. So a little while longer left on this for Mooresville and Statesville. You now you can see the rain is going to begin to taper off uh, in places like Gastonia very soon. But Charlotte, you've got a little while longer left for that rain. We're going to talk more about these flood Flooding issues as we head through the rest of the morning, so stick around. At the home. There goes my building. No, 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 no. There goes my building. There goes my building. It'll catch on the It'll catch somewhere. No. Breaking news now. This is new video of emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredell County, North Carolina. If you didn't hear what the woman said uh, clearly, she said 
There goes her building, that shed just absolutely being washed away by the power of that flowing water, which has uh, been something that we've seen quite a bit this morning. Torrential floodwaters in Taylorsville, North Carolina as well. Just such a mess across a huge portion of the Carolinas. Look at this. This is clearly not where water is supposed to be, and this isn't a little bit of water. This is a lot of water. This is enough water to uh, float your car. This is definitely enough water to pick you off your feet. Uh, and uh, you can see just as far as you can see, really, water in this shot where it's not supposed to be. Here's the problem. The rain is going to come to an end, but the local rivers, the local streams are still going to be swollen and those flood prone places will likely still have standing water. So keep that in mind, even as the rain does begin to taper off. It's already been a record rainfall day for a place like um, Charlotte, where we have seen our wettest November day on record ever, and the rain is still falling. We're up to four, nearly four and a half inches of rain. That just blows the old record of uh, 3.26 inches of rain out of the water. As mentioned, that rain is still falling as well. We've got a flash flood warning for Charlotte, Huntersville, and Rock Hill. And here's the new information from this, guys. It has been extended until 1 p.m. now. So that was initially supposed to expire uh, at 11 a.m., so in less than a minute, but now extended until 1 p.m. because we're just not seeing that rain come to an end quite uh, as soon as we thought. Now, will it begin to taper off? Yes, it will. But currently uh, still stuck in that rain and adding to those totals. We do have a flash flood warning for uh, Matthews, Mint Hill, Monroe until 2 p.m. As you head farther north and east, you're going to see these flash flood warnings lasting a little bit farther into the evening because our clearing is going to go from west to east. You can see it here as drier air builds in and we finally get this front to clear out of the way. It will clear out, but man, it is messy so far this morning. Here's that drier air that I was talking about, all this orange that you see here, but we have all of this tropical moisture interacting with uh, the first front that's kind of hanging out and those things coming together are really enhancing that rainfall that we've seen so far this morning. It is a dangerous situation out there. I can't stress enough. Give yourself a little bit of extra time if you're heading out across the Carolinas, across uh, Virginia, D.C., the Delmarva Peninsula. Now, here's what we're looking at as we head through your Thursday afternoon. You'll notice maybe a speckle of a shower or two around Charlotte. Raleigh, you're still stuck in that rain at 3 p.m. and certainly along the coast. Places like Wilmington and Hatteras, as well as Norfolk, you guys are going to be stuck in the rain for the longest period of time because it is clearing out from west to east. So here, the Outer Banks at 9 p.m. tonight still stuck in that rain, as well as Wilmington. In fact, the Outer Banks, you guys are going to be the last to clear out as we head into early Friday morning. So certainly some of those low-lying flood-prone uh, places could be having those issues. Flood watch and flash flood watch in effect. That is through tonight for places like Charlotte. So, of course, a watch and a warning is different. A warning is it's ongoing. That flooding is imminent. It's happening right now. Uh, the watch just means that conditions are possible for that to happen. That flash flood watch stretching to the coast as well. So this is what we're looking at through tonight. More rainfall expected to come. And as I mentioned, you're going to see some of those higher totals adding up along the coast some pockets of three to five inches, but certainly some isolated amounts of five to eight inches can't be ruled out as we head through the rest of tonight. And those tropical downpours, they're of course making for a dangerous situation in North Carolina. Emergency crews busy right now with several water rescues because of the flooding. Kent Green joins us on the phone with an update. He's the director of fire services and emergency management with the fire marshal's office. Kent, thanks so much for being with us on what is a very busy morning for you guys. What can you tell us about some of the water rescues that uh, you've seen so far this morning? Well, we've had anywhere from 10 to 15 water rescues. Several of those were cars that attempted to cross flooded roadways or bridges. Uh, several of the others were from uh, residences where the water was encroaching on the buildings uh, as high as up to the windows. So are there any roads or areas in particular that you're, you want to tell people to avoid? It's mostly right now in the northern half of the county in our what we call the central school community or central fire district as well as the Trinity uh, community. Um, the roads around Snow Creek and the South Yadkin River, uh, those are particularly in the bridges in those areas, we've had two bridges, uh, or one bridge washed out and two roadways washed out. So it's still a very dangerous situation. Oh, definitely very. And Kent, I know when we talked last hour, you said you don't have any evacuations underway, but has that changed? It has not. Uh, so, of course, we know the dangers of the flooding. That is always an issue. Are there other issues unfolding? I know you said you have bridges washed out. Uh, are you seeing anything like power outages or anything like that? We have had some power outages. We're at about 200 customers without power right now, uh, primarily due to trees down on power lines. 
Uh, the rain has subsided, so the visibility is improving, but there's still a lot of standing water on the roadways that is causing some motor vehicle accidents as well. Yeah, definitely one of those mornings where you want to give yourself a little bit of extra time. Thanks for being with us. Uh, again, that's Kent Green with the Fire Marshal's Office. Such a, a busy, dangerous morning there. And Dr. Postel, it's not just going to stop with the rain. There's tropical downpours. They're pushing across the southeast and mid-Atlantic. But We also have that possibility for some stronger storms as well. Yeah, we do. The Storm Prediction Center has outlined an area, Felicia, across parts of South Carolina and North Carolina where we got a shot at some severe thunderstorms. And that does include areas like uh, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, New Bern. I think probably the western section of this outlook can be trimmed back a little bit because more stable air has moved in from the west. It's really, I would say, this from all about the center line on east that we're going to be dealing with the greatest chance for that severe weather. And if you look at the radar right now, we don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings in progress, but you can almost draw a line where the front is right about in here and sort of along into the east of that that we still have that instability in place, the kind that is sufficient to support severe weather, even though we don't have any now. If storms get going in some of these areas, let's say from Charleston on northeastward, then we could be looking at some of those uh, tapping into that instability and becoming severe. Overall, the big picture is pretty clear. We've got some of those ingredients in place. This is Ada right now. It's a tropical storm over North Florida, about ready to move through Jacksonville. Again, the weather with the center of it, not so bad. Most of the worst weather is now offshore off the east coast of Florida. But the circulation around Ada is bringing in a lot of moisture from the uh, Atlantic side, which, as Felicia has been talking about all morning, contributing to the very heavy rain over the Carolinas. But also this frontal zone coming in from the west is complicating factors. It is that moisture return and the front moving in that is going to provide some of that ingredient list for severe thunderstorms. And if you look at the amount of instability that's in place, there it is, even all the way from coastal Georgia on northward, that is sufficient to support that severe weather. Now, what else I'm going to show is the Artorcons. We've got a chance here for some of those thunderstorms to produce tornadoes. This is not a high-end tornado event by any means, but the fact that we've got Torcons of two, that is enough to say that we've got to keep an eye on any storm that pops up because there is enough wind shear to support little supercells that'll be racing through the region. Again, something to watch going forward over the next few hours. Overall, I'm going to go through now the forecast of the radar. I'm always hesitant to do this because it's very difficult to track or forecast individual thunderstorms with any model, but this one gives you the idea of basically where they're going to be, roughly when, and you can get the sense that it is along this path right in here, basically east of I-95, I think. That's where we have the greatest chance for severe thunderstorms, Felicia, later on this afternoon. And then by like later on tonight, it's all offshore, better weather moves in tomorrow. Definitely uh, a better day tomorrow. Thanks so much, Dr. Postel. Ada whipped up southwest Florida with heavy rain and storm surge under the cover of darkness. It triggered gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour across the Tampa Bay area. Ada has also brought the fourth highest water level at the St. Petersburg gauge with nearly three and a half feet. So let's talk a little bit more about Ada's stir surge in the coastal impacts on Florida's west coast. We have our own meteorologist Mike Seidel there. He's joining us live from St. Peach Beach. Uh, and uh, Mike, you've been talking to residents there pretty much all morning the storm surge really uh, did a number on some of these neighborhoods. Yes, we're still in the same neighborhood on the backyard on Boca Siega Bay with Tricia Thompson and we just talked about the fourth highest uh, surge at the uh, gauge at St. Pete almost four feet and you witnessed all that coming in late yesterday along at the same time the tide coming in. Uh, yes, I did along the back here uh, as it got close to high tide. I was videoing and I could watch the water coming over the seawall and splashing up behind the uh, lighting. And then as it got close to high tide, it actually just kept coming in and coming in. And as you can see, it went into the pool and was just splashing really heavy. And the wind was blowing so heavy, uh, the back sliders there, the rain was forcing water into the house. So we had a succession of five sets of towels, you know, in and out of the dryer trying to absorb the water. And then, of course, out front, we have never had the garages uh, flood before, and we've never had the water in uh, up to close to the door, which, you know, there are some steps, so it didn't get up that far, but we've never had the pavers flooded, and that's a pretty long driveway. 
Uh, we've had this issue with the streets flooding, but never to this degree. And first thing this morning, um, I got out here, filled three cans of uh, garbage, and you can see the shells have come up. We had debris from the ocean, and then someone lost their dock, and there was a piece of wood lodged in between here that's out front now. And you've got a quite the job to clean out the pool. Uh, I actually took the rake and uh, used the rake to skim what we could. Thank goodness the pool guy's coming tomorrow, but this is a big <laughs> mess. So, but yes, uh, we've never had it happen like this. So it's, uh, but again, I'm very grateful we have power because I understand there were 30,000 people without power and I know people who have power, who, who excuse me, do not have power. Right. Uh, there's people here on the island who have their houses flooded. That's not the case with us, except for the water by the sliders. So again, I'm blessed. Uh, I always try to be optimistic. It could have been worse. Now, again, I understand we have a storm surge today. We said so this morning, I don't know the time frame, but they say there's going to be a surge with high tide. Well, so. I think we're going to be okay today because the wind has backed way off. Oh, well, that, that's that, good. That's, you know, that's the big, the big push is from the wind yes. up Tampa Bay and here into Boca. Yes. Siega uh, Bay. Siega Bay. And we experienced that this past weekend. We had winds blowing, I think it was 30 mile an hour. Right. So though it can change overnight, the wind. And uh, all the patio furniture that was out here is now behind our new little section here. And last weekend, we literally moved all of that uh, behind the, our curtain here that we made. Okay, Tricia Thompson, we appreciate your replaying the day yesterday, which you hope you won't have to go through again anytime soon. Well, it is November, so yeah, it was you got to think last night. It was scary seeing the water, not knowing how far it was going to come. Well, exactly. And again, we knew that high tide was at 939, but still watching it, not knowing how much it could go up. But just as soon as high tide hit, then you did see the water starting to succeed. So, thankfully. Yes, thankfully. Well, or thanks else. for joining us this morning here in uh, St. Pete Beach. Dr. Postel, another story of you're sitting in your house and you know the surge is coming in and you're just wondering how high it's going to get. You know, mm -hmm. we give you those predictions above normally high ground of four to six feet, but you just don't know, you know, how it's going to turn out based on the tide and, and where you're sitting. Yeah, it's uh, still there's a lot of unpredictability there, even when we think we know how high the water is going to get. You never really know for sure, which is why you need to follow the advice of the local officials when they really think that you should get out of the way for the worst case scenario. Probably not a bad idea to do so. Thank you very much, Mike. Let's have a look now at where Ada is. Now, this goes back from last night. It made landfall, uh, Ada did, near Cedar Key, Florida, just after 4 a.m., and is now basically over Jacksonville. That would be the center of the circulation. But there really isn't much wind anymore over land near Jacksonville. The, any of the strong winds right now are right along the coast uh, and coming in off the water. That would be all the way uh, along coastal Georgia through Florida's first coast. We've seen earlier, earlier today, some wind gusts, let's say on Amelia Island and Fernandina Beach gusting to 40. Those winds aren't as strong anymore, 18 gusts to 26. But, you know, even still, as far south as Ormond and Daytona, we're getting wind gusts around 20 miles per hour. Inland, when the wind comes out of the west or northwest, uh, it weakens a little bit and the air mass dries out. That's good news. So better weather is soon on the way for Florida and southeastern Georgia. Now, for South Carolina, we're still dealing with a front that's going to be moving in. And the circulation around Ada, aloft anyway, is bringing in some moisture toward the north and northwest. So as the front approaches, I think we will see more showers and thunderstorms develop along the coast of South Carolina. Not necessarily directly as part of Ada, but more indirectly as the wind around it sort of tangles up with the front coming in, Felicia, and adds to the rain that would already be there in the first place. So it's going to be a stormy time on coastal South and North Carolina, Felicia, but tomorrow way better weather comes in. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that, Dr. Yeah. Postel. Let's take a live look now at conditions at Lauderdale by the sea. You guys can expect some uh, rain at times today and rain on and off throughout the weekend as well. A bit breezy 
See, still just a bit rough, as you can tell, but 78 degrees, a balmy 78. South Florida, you've seen so much rain over the past seven days. Let's take a closer look at some of those uh, radar estimated totals. This is just absolutely impressive. In this uh, circle that you see here, that's a foot to a foot and a half of rain. Places like Hard Rock Stadium just absolutely swamped over the past week or so. Where you're seeing this red through a huge chunk of Broward County down into uh, northeastern Miami-Dade County, that is 8 to 12 inches. So you're talking about certainly some flooding issues. We do have a flood fl flood watch there. It's uh, in effect for coastal Palm Beach County down through coastal Miami Dade through this evening. Now rain just beginning to push offshore right now. You've had a little line move through, but you're not quite done. You're going to have another round of rain and storms as we head into the middle afternoon. We'll talk more about all of this coming up after the break. Hi, I'm Pat and I'm seven. This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long, right here on the Weather Channel. New video from Charlotte, North Carolina, where torrential downpours are flooding highways. You can see here vehicles stalled along the highway in those floodwaters. Now other vehicles driving through the water, which of course is what we tell you do not do. Uh, turn around, don't drown, find another route because uh, while they're making it right now, you see that some uh, vehicles did not make it and that is absolutely not the situation you want to be stuck in, especially when you're not done with the flooding risk. That water could continue to rise as the rainfall is still falling in places like Charlotte. Now, will it begin to taper off? Yes, it will. That's the good news, but it's not tapering off as quickly as expected. So this flash flood warning that was set to expire at 11 a.m. has been extended until 1 p.m. because the rain is still falling there in the Charlotte metro area. We've really had pretty large population centers impacted by these flooding issues so far this morning. Uh, Durham, Raleigh, Durham, you guys are under this um, this flash flood warning as well. Back into Sanford and Pinehurst, you can see I-73 included in a portion of that flash flood warning. The roads are going to be wet hydroplaning. Even if you're not dealing with flooding, hydroplaning is going to be an issue on these wet roads. Norfolk, you guys are included in a flash flood warning right now, and that's lasting until 1215 local time. The problem is we have this frontal boundary that's kind of hanging out and tropical moisture interacting with that frontal boundary, and that is the perfect setup for the rain falling over the same areas over and over again, or kind of a training setup, which is what we call it when the storm set up one right after another uh, and in the same areas. Here's what we're looking at. Here's 3 p.m. should be much drier in places like Charlotte by 3. Uh, Raleigh, you will be clearing out by 3, but as we head into the evening, you'll notice the Outer Banks, especially coastal North Carolina, Wilmington. You guys are in this as we head into the overnight. It is going to be a while before the Outer Banks are out of this rain, and there are definitely some low-lying flood-prone places there, so flooding could become an issue. A quick look at the flood watches and flash flood watches we have in effect through tonight. Now, Ada made landfall earlier this morning, striking the west coast of Florida, bringing heavy rain, wind, and storm surge to the Tampa area. Boats bashing ashore, waves spilling over railings, streets submerged, stop signs blowing back and forth, and emergency vehicles out performing water rescues. The old Port Tampa gauge actually tipping its all-time high of 3.87 feet. Yeah, record storm surge there. Joining us live from St. Pete Beach to talk about Ada's impacts is meteorologist Mike Seidel. So Mike, you've been talking to a lot of residents in that area and uh, a lot of them have said, you know, uh, for a tropical storm, this has really co created quite a problem. 
It has. In fact, we talked to one gentleman earlier, uh, Steve Gordon. He said he's been here 16 years, and this is the worst he's seen it. But keep in mind, Tampa hasn't had a direct hit from a hurricane in about a century. This is what's left. We still have some water in the streets. The city brought out pumps this morning. They're also working on a drainage project to help eradicate and alleviate these issues when we have surges coming in from the bays. But this uh, little cute yellow home, beach house, you can see over on the wall very clearly the water line. And notice it goes above the door. They had water go into the house. Uh, that's the second house. The house around the corner we talked to earlier had water go in too. And so we're talking remediation, whether it's hardwood, carpet, uh, drywall. You've got to pull it all out and, uh, you know, and get it out before you get the mildew, to get rid of the mildew and make sure you don't have mildew. So homes have been flooded. You can see some of the uh, cleanup there in the trash cans. And Dr. Postel, there you go. It doesn't take much. You know, this is not, this is a mid-sized tropical storm, but that southeast wind that just kept pushing the water right up through Tampa Bay and these other bays in the Tampa Bay area caused the issues. Right around the corner here, the water was five feet deep last night at high tide. That was the other issue, by the way. The surge coincided with a high tide here. Yeah, and you know, you don't even need a tropical cyclone to get coastal flooding. You just need the right wind direction from right. any number of factors, and you can get flooding. Miami, we know, floods on sunny days, and so do many other areas in the southeast. Thanks very much, Mike. But you know what? Uh, we can't shut the door on this hurricane season yet. Many of us would love to, but there is another thing to watch out there. That is called Invest 98L. We're investigating this area of disturbed weather for the possibility, indeed likelihood, of development over the next several days. It is this blob of spin that I contoured in here. That area of blue and green is a measure of the atmospheric spin aloft. And what I'm looking at right now, when I see it like that, and when I put the wind around it, kind of circulating in a counterclockwise way, maybe not all the way around, but close, there's enough turning in that wind and enough thunderstorms in the area to say, you know what, I think we got a, ourselves our next depression. Now, it's not happening yet, but there's a 90% chance, according to the Hurricane Center, of it happening over the next five days on a path like that. Our next name would be Iota, and I do believe we have Iota staring us down once again here. This would be the next name storm moving westward across the Caribbean like we've seen before. This would be a problem. Let's just assume here that the forecasts are pretty good with this one, that Iota, let's call it Iota, moves into Central America late in the weekend or early next week. It would very likely bring a ton of rain to many places that just recently dealt with a ton of rain from Hurricane Ada. We'll be right back. Breaking news now. This is video of uh, emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredell, North Carolina. Just watch what happens. The flood waters, flowing flood waters, wash this shed away. That just goes to show you the sheer force of water. Uh, the flash flooding has been ongoing for quite some time. You know, you see the flooding of those uh, flood prone areas. And then also you see the swelling of rivers and streams. Also breaking now, the Queen City has been absolutely swamped by rain this morning. You can see the water uh, pouring down onto the highway there. Just absolutely yeah, looking like waterfalls in places that are not supposed to look like that. We've seen water rescues so far this morning. Water has been in homes. Uh, certainly some accidents related to the rainfall. Hydroplaning becoming a big issue as well. And not just any kind of rainy day in Charlotte, but record rainfall for Charlotte today. So far, we have seen the wettest November day we have ever seen in Charlotte, nearly four and a half inches and counting as the rain has not uh, subsided just yet there in Charlotte. Some of the higher amounts here where you're seeing those bright orange specks, that could be five to eight inches there around Winston-Salem there near Greensboro as well. And then as mentioned, that rain has not stopped falling in places like Charlotte down into Rock Hill. Now, are you on the uh, the back edge of it? Is that going to be moving through and clearing out soon? Yes, it will. But not not soon enough to end this flash flood warning. It is lasting until 1 p.m. there in Charlotte. So you guys have a little while longer to go on that flash flood warning. We also have a flash flood warning in Cary, Durham and Raleigh. So that area where you're seeing that rain. And here's the problem for you guys. It's lasting until 2 15. So you have quite some time and you'll notice that rain shield still well back to your north and west. We're clearing out today from the west to the east. So places the farthest east are going to take the most time to clear out. Norfolk, you're one of those places. Now, right now, the flash flood warning for um, cities like Chesapeake and Franklin 
That is only until 1215, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that extending out a little bit longer because I do not think all of the rain is going to be out of that area by lunchtime. So here's what we're looking at. The big picture, the swath of moisture, tropical moisture interacting with a front that's kind of hanging out. We're not seeing that rain move into the Outer Banks just yet. Wilmington, not quite as rainy for you either, but it is coming. We've got all of this tropical moisture still hanging out. Here's the good news, though. Dry air. All of that orange is much drier air building in behind a more vigorous front that's going to sweep through. But first, we've got to deal with all of this rain. So rain really picking up through the afternoon two, three o'clock around the Outer Banks around Wilmington. And then once that gets started, it's lasting into the nighttime hours. And you can see there the general direction of clearing is from the west to the east. So tomorrow a much better day. But today anyways, we end into tonight. We do have flood watches and flash flood watches from all of this tropical moisture. And Dr. Postel, you know, I think at this point we've been talking about Ada for uh, I don't even know how long, but it has far reaching impacts as tropical moisture uh, causing flooding. So a lot of things going on still. Yeah, a lot of things. In fact, we're moving uh, Ada right now through northeastern Florida. It's probably just a little bit north of Jacksonville as we speak. But if you look back since, let's say, about midnight or 11 p.m. last night, uh, Ada was still offshore at that time and then eventually crossed the coast just after 4 a.m. Eastern time near Cedar Key and has since now moved over land and weakened even more. So we're really not dealing with much of a wind event anymore. There's still plenty of rain offshore and a southeasterly wind across Georgia and South Carolina that is bringing moist air into the region, giving us an opportunity for more rain later on today. But the vast majority of even the rain is offshore, the kind that's directly tied to Ada, and it will likely stay offshore. Now, Ada will be involved in helping the front that's coming in produce more rain than it otherwise would. But the actual rain, the core of Ada, is now moving through the region here in northeast Florida and soon to be entirely off the coast over the Atlantic. Fernandina Beach, Florida, Mealy Island winds are out of the south at 15 miles per hour. A couple of hours ago, we saw gusts there at 40. Overall, the winds along the coast are weaker now even than they were earlier this morning. We're dealing with 20 mile per hour wind gusts generally and the winds out of the west. As Ada moves away, the winds out of the west are even weaker than that and will begin to dry everybody out. That's really good news. Better weather is soon on the way as we track Ada through the next few hours. Again, the core of the precipitation associated with it is right here, and that largely stays offshore. All this stuff to the north right here, that's Felicia, that front that you've been talking about all morning long moving in and finally moving offshore, we think, by overnight tonight with better weather tomorrow for sure. Thanks, Dr. Postel. And it's not just the rain that's a problem. We can't rule out the risk for isolated tornadoes today either. We'll pinpoint the areas at risk for severe thunderstorms and time out the arrival to your area. That's coming up. Let's head to Lauderdale by the sea now where you can tell it's still a pretty breezy time there to have a little bit of wave action. The first thing you'll notice though, those dark skies, some rain is possible today. Good morning. Welcome back to the Weather Channel coverage of Ada. We'll have more on the flash flooding and the issues in the Carolinas in just a month. First, though, we're looking back to the impacts here at St. Pete Beach. And we've got Jody McLean here who lives in this beautiful beach house. That's the I name of it. lived in this beautiful beach house. Well, yeah. you're still here and you're still okay. We noticed the water line and we noticed the water line goes above the bottom of the front door. That's, that's never a, a good sign. No, yeah, and that's the first time it's done. We've been here since 2011. This is the highest the water's ever been on this island. And what was your, um, what were you doing last night when the well, water came up? Did it come up very fast? Because that's so what we've been fast. told. I yeah. mean, usually we have more time to prepare and we have a pretty good evacuation plan because this is a flood prone area, but it was so fast that we didn't have time to react. So we panicked and actually ran next door with our dog. The water came up that fast. I remember looking out during a movie and it was maybe up to the, the driveway and uh -huh. it came out a half hour later and looked and it was all the way up to the door. So within 30 minutes, it went that far and then it just started coming in the house and it, it came in so fast that we panicked and ran. Well, you've been nice enough to let us go in yeah, and show our viewers at home, see view this mess, there. and um, be thankful you're okay. Right. You, there uh, wasn't a place in the house. That go ahead in, and room. I'll try to keep the microphone ahead of you. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Well, you can see the water line even on the chair, how high it came up. Look at that. There's a water line on the chair. Yeah. So that's a pretty good indication. And we're just waiting for the insurance adjuster to come out before we clean. So you've got, these are laminate or hardwood? It's a hybrid hardwood. 
floor. I'm not sure exactly. And what there, want to walk back there? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lead the way. Give right. us a little tour here. There's your sister. Hello, Hello sister. sister. How, are you? How are you? What's your name? Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Nice to uh, see you. And so you got everything up on the up here on the couch. Yeah, we tried to do a little damage control, but and here's the back bedroom, and this was completely underwater. Actually, there's not a house or a room in the house that wasn't underwater. Well, it, six inches. it doesn't look like it got up to the. Is it drywall or a plaster? Well, I think right oh, here. Oh, I see. I yeah, do see a little see bit there. So there's going to have to be some remediation, I, I suspect, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. because of the issue with mold. Yeah. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> so what's the status on your insurance? Uh, I called first thing this morning as soon as we could get over here and uh, kind of assess the damage. And uh, they're supposed to send out an adjuster within 24 hours. And I'm sure they're being bombarded right now. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're OK. And I'm thanks so much okay for uh, showing us what you're going through and went through. and. It's just, you know, like you said, it came up so fast, you ran next door with your dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we just kind of panicked and grabbed a couple of things and our dog and sloshed across the, the lawn to the neighbor's house. So, taking it one step at a time, but that's the hazards of living at the beach, I guess. Yeah, you pay for the paradise sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Jody. We're pretty hard. Thanks, Thanks so guys. much. Okay, Dr. Postel, once again, it came up fast, as she said. They ran next door uh, at the power of water and a high tide, too. It came in at high tide, which was uh, one of the disconcerting things. Had it come in at low tide, the, the tidal range here is about two feet, I believe, yesterday. So it would have been about two feet lower, and this house would have not had water in it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen and I've heard the analogy from very respectable scientists on storm surge likening it to a tsunami. Now, not all the time, but sometimes under the right circumstances, you can get that kind of dramatic and rapid water rise exactly as these folks were describing. That's kind of terrifying, and I'm glad they're okay. Um, but, Mike, that's, thanks for that reporting. That's great stuff. Gives you an idea of the dangers of flooding with landfall and tropical cyclones. One of the other dangers is severe weather, although this severe weather today is not directly associated with Ada. It's kind of uh, peripherally associated with it. Um, there's a front coming in, and Ada's helping the air mass get a bit more unstable. Um, but that's what we're looking at. The chance for some severe thunderstorms today across parts of eastern South Carolina and eastern North Carolina, uh, but in a shrinking and contracting zone. I've been talking about this all morning. Initially, the area was drawn pretty large, and I figured early on that it was really going to be about the eastern half of that zone that was going to be most at risk, and the area that I'm talking about is here. So not all of the rain, let's, let's say that's from uh, Raleigh on westward or Columbia on westward, all of that rain behind that zone that I drew in here is stable-ish rain. In other words, it's the kind of rain that's in an environment that's not going to support severe weather, so we don't have to worry about that. Flooding, yes, but not severe thunderstorms. Those, if they're going to happen, are going to be much closer to the coast, I would say along and to the east of I-95. There is the sort of setup. There's the front that I was talking about moving in from the northwest. This is the flow around Ada that's kind of uh, helping out indirectly the uh, chances for severe weather, bringing in some moisture off the Gulf of Mexico, leading to a greater instability ahead of that front. But really, it's all going to have to happen if we're going to get severe weather where the winds are still out of the south or southeast. And again, that is basically east of I-95. So watch out for the possibility of some severe thunderstorms in that zone for a few more hours. The primary hazard would be damaging straight line winds, Felicia, but we have Torconza too, meaning you can't really rule out the possibility of a tornado or two, a brief spin up, as you might expect with a front and a tropical cyclone uh, along the way. Back to you. Yeah, Dr. Postel, a lot thrown in the mix this morning. Breaking right now, the Queen City absolutely soaked by rain this morning. Guys, look at this. This is water up to maybe a, a foot from uh, the, the tops of cars here in Charlotte. You can tell that this looks like maybe it was a, a parking lot somewhere. This is via the Charlotte Fire Department. Guys, flooding a huge issue across the Piedmont this morning. We've got more on all of this coming up after the break. At Physician.
Welcome back to Weather Center Live. We got some new video from Clearwater, Florida. Take a look at this. If you can see debris, that's Ada's surge that's washed it up onto the road. This is the Courtney Campbell Causeway that spans across Old Tampa Bay between Clearwater and Tampa. Lots of debris from the water covering the road there. You can see that. That's the uh, effect of what the storm surge has done in and around the Tampa Clearwater area. That was the primary hazard that we saw with Ada. It wasn't the wind. I mean, we had some strong wind gusts reported along Florida's west coast yesterday, 50 to 60 miles per hour. But it was the water that did the damage that you saw that will be mostly responsible for the uh, the economic loss in the region, I'm sure. How much of the hurricane season do we have left? Everybody wants to know that question. I want to know that question. And normally on the calendar, you could say mid-November. OK, statistically speaking, because it traditionally ends November 30th, we got, I don't know, 3 percent left. Yeah, but it's not that way this year, is it? It seems to not uh, have followed 2020, the rules uh, that have been set for us before. So, yes, statistically, we have a little bit left in the hurricane season. But I have a feeling that we are not even close to done with the 2020 hurricane season. There's more out there. And the next one to be named, I think, is going to be done so in the next couple of days. And it will be IOTA. So get prepared for a new storm, IOTA, in the Caribbean. That is right now Invest 98L. You can see that swirling around there. It's got a whole bunch of angry thunderstorms there, and it's got some measure of spin. You can sort of calculate that out aloft. The winds aloft are kind of maybe not rotating around in a complete circle, but certainly curving around. That counts as spin, and we've got that in the region, right? So when you add the thunderstorms in this environment that's kind of spinny, and you've got other factors in play. Yep, we've got an area to watch very carefully. 90% chance of developing into a depression or a named storm over the next five days, likely on a path like this. We've seen this before. This is very similar to the path that Ada took across the Caribbean. That's a problem for interests in the Central American region of Nicaragua and Honduras. Let's play this out according to the Euro model, which is right down the path of that area outlined by the Hurricane Center. It is very possible that we'll be dealing early next week with yet again another landfall of a named storm in Central America, bringing all kinds of heavy rain into some of the same places that saw a ton of it with Ada not long ago. So here's the Euro model forecast for the amount of rain. Now we know typically model forecasts of tropical cyclone rainfall underdone. So imagine this being an underestimate of what we think we'll get with this, assuming it develops the way it does. We could be dealing with a, a massive amount of rain once again, Felicia, uh, in a similar place to where Ada delivered its devastating blow across the region. This is Ada's rainfall, but Felicia, you can imagine one after the other, really bad news for the region. Yeah, one really bad news, a second even worse. Thanks, Dr. Postel. Well, new video now of torrential floodwaters in Taylorsville, North Carolina. Yeah, this is exactly what you do not want to be caught in. If you don't have to be out in uh, this area, Charlotte, uh, Winston-Salem, Raleigh-Durham, all of those places, stay in because flooding has been an issue. The roads are wet and it has been a dangerous situation. We've had reports of water rescues on and off all morning. Now, the good news for a place like Charlotte is the rain is beginning to taper off. This rain shield is going to continue moving off to the um, east. So we'll start to see that clearing from west to east, but still that flash flood warning in effect for about another hour in Charlotte. Flash flood warnings all through the Carolinas from the Piedmont into the coastal plain, stretching up into Virginia. As you can see, that swath of rain still sticking around quite a bit. And it seems like no matter how much we tell drivers to turn around and avoid flooded roads, we still see the images of people getting caught in potentially deadly situations. So this is a reminder that you don't need the warnings, uh, but you need to heed these warnings that bad decisions could be your last. We hear it again and again, and quite frankly, we're tired of telling you about it. Stories of people encountering dangerous floodwaters and then attempting to drive through them anyway, only to find themselves trapped, putting themselves and the first responders in danger. Some even drive around barriers thinking they can make it across. The force and power of water is always underestimated. That's why the barriers are there in the first place. Let's face it, more than half of all flood-related deaths happen when a vehicle is driven into dangerous flood water. 
It only takes six inches of flowing water to knock a grown person off their feet. And it only takes two feet of moving water to float just about any vehicle, no matter how big you think that vehicle is. It'll go right down the road. So remember, approach flooded roads and intersections with caution. If you're in doubt, turn around, because the alternative just isn't worth it. There goes my building. There goes my building. There goes my building. Tropical downpours, well, they are making for huge problems this morning. And you can see that here, video of emergency crews rescuing a family from flooding in Iredell County, North Carolina. If you didn't hear exactly what the woman said, she said, there goes her building. You can see that shed being washed away there by that briskly moving water. Not just there, though, but torrential flood waters in Taylorsville, North Carolina as well. Look at this flowing water. That is certainly enough to float your car, to knock you off your feet. Flooding has been the word all across this area this morning. The Queen City has also been just absolutely swamped by rain so far this Thursday morning. Look at this. This is water up to nearly the um, tops of some of these cars. You can even see that one car still has its um, windshield wipers on. I really hope that there was no one left in that car. That uh, storm surge or that uh, flash flooding. That's why we call it flash. It happens so quickly. Uh, and you can get stuck in that very quickly and it becomes a dangerous situation. Well, let's talk more about what is going on because we've had multiple flash flood warnings for good reason, as you saw in a lot of those videos. So what you're looking at is a radar read cap since midnight last night, and you can see for places like Charlotte that they were in rain, especially a heavy rain band for hours. Now, the good news is uh, for a place like Charlotte, we are going to continue seeing this uh, progressing eastward. So we're going to see the clearing from the west to the east, but just not quickly enough. We still have a flash flood warning in effect for Charlotte, Huntersville and Rockville until 1 p.m. So a little while longer left on that. Uh, but the good news is the rain is beginning to taper off there. The bad news is swollen rivers, swollen creeks are still going to be uh, causing issues. Places that are flood prone uh, are going to have that standing water around Durham, around Raleigh, back into Sanford, Pinehurst. You're included in that flash flood warning as well and it doesn't stop there. We have flash flood warnings stretching up into portions of Virginia, Norfolk, Portsmouth, uh, Chesapeake all included in that. Now this is expected or it is scheduled to end at 12 15. So we've got about 15 minutes left on that, but I do suspect that it's going to be extended as you guys are stuck in the rain and you're going to be stuck in the rain for quite some time. So here's our swath of rain. We've got a front that's kind of hanging out and that moisture being enhanced by all the tropical moisture that we have around. Now the good news is all of this dry air is trying to make its way in. We have another more vigorous front that's going to sweep through and clear things out as we head through the nighttime tonight, but we've got to get through all of this tropical moisture for first. So let's time it out for you. 3 p.m. Norfolk, you're still stuck in it. Uh, really going to see places like the Outer Banks stuck in this rain for quite some time into tonight. Here's 9 p.m. on the future radar, and it is soggy in the Outer Banks down into Wilmington as well. Now, you'll notice eventually all of this does push offshore, and things will be looking much better by tomorrow, at least in terms of the rain falling from the sky. But the floods have been a problem, and we do have that flood watch and a flash flood watch through tonight for portions of uh, the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic. Well, it doesn't take long for the flooding to turn dangerous, of course. Our Chris Warren breaks down the factors that make this a reality. Every thunderstorm begins with a single raindrop, but trillions can follow and all that water rushes downhill. The early makings of a disaster, and it doesn't need to be raining where you are. A street like this in a valley can funnel the water, creating a dangerous setup for a flash flood. Heavy rainfall is the main ingredient in flash flooding. Other factors include building in a flood zone, improper drainage, and ground that's just too wet and can't absorb any more water. And this happens fast. Now look at the street. The water is business to business here, wall to wall. Whoa, what's this guy doing? And this water is about six inches now, and it's enough to stall vehicles and even float vehicles. In some cases, you're going to lose control, and you don't want to be this guy. So if you come to a street that's flooded, turn around, don't drown. More than half of the deaths from flooding each year occur in vehicle. And the water's still rising here. In fact, it's enough to flow pretty much anything away that's not bolted down at two feet. It's going to carry you away. Uh, even cars like this, oh my gosh, look at this. This is an SUV, and the water is high enough now to carry SUVs and pickup trucks. And this water is well inside these businesses, and this is scary. This is bad. That's not good to see something like that. We're talking some immense destruction with the force 
of this water. It can carry debris for miles, entire trees. In fact, water flowing at just 10 miles an hour can produce the same force as winds blowing at 300 miles an hour. Look at this. This is a huge log coming down the road and so scary. You never know it's even in the water, but you can see some of the larger objects, including a truck right here. Absolutely life-threatening situations that come with flash flooding. And unfortunately, more heavy rain events are occurring due to our warming climate. So you are more likely to be caught in this situation. If you ever do get stuck in a flash flood, try to stay calm. Get as high as possible and make yourself visible while you wait for first responders. Heavy rain events are predicted to be 40% more common for parts of the country within this century. Just as quickly as the water came up, it goes down, leaving behind a muddy mess of debris and dangers like sharp objects, hazardous waste, also a big concern, and down power lines. So follow the forecast and remember, when a road is flooded, always, always turn around, don't drown. A lot of people needing that reminder this morning. There's a severe area that we're also going to be watching closely today. Dr. Postel, you're going to take a look at that. Not only the flooding going to be an issue, but in some places they're going to have to keep an eye out for those severe storms as well. Yes, I think you're right, Felicia. Eastern South Carolina and Eastern North Carolina, roughly along an area uh, along into the east of I-95. So that includes Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, New Bern, areas in between. That's where the greatest chance for some severe thunderstorms exists today. But the Storm Prediction Center went out ahead just recently, put out what's called a mesoscale discussion for essentially this area. Uh, and they're saying, you know what? A watch is probably not going to be needed. That's good news. That means the risk for severe weather is not particularly high. It's kind of marginal. And we just have too many clouds, too much instability, too much mess here to really support any organized severe weather. We don't have any in progress. That's good news. A lot of heavy rain, flash flooding. Felicia's been talking about that all morning long. Very dangerous weather with that. But in terms specifically of severe thunderstorms, it does not look like they are going to be much of an issue today. Not completely out of the picture, but the odds are that we're not going to see a whole lot of them. We do have that front coming into an air mass, according to these shades of orange and red, that is very moist overall. And there is Ada, or there it was at the last advisory, and that's bringing in some additional moisture out of the Atlantic. So we're getting a lot of moisture transport into a zone out ahead of that front which is leading to some growing instability in these regions in orange and yellow. That instability, not high on the scale, but it's enough to support severe thunderstorms if we could get any to develop. And there's sort of a, a narrowing window of opportunity here where we have the, still that wind out of the south. Remember, there's I-95 right along here, and basically any of that south wind is on the east side of that interstate. So that's where the air mass is supportive of severe thunderstorms. And I don't see any right now. There's heavy rain, certainly uh, on the cooler side of that boundary. But uh, for the meantime, we are still going to be dealing with some chance of severe weather in the next couple of hours or so before it all moves off the coast. Tornado chances, not particularly high, but Felicia, you can't really rule it out given that we're dealing with, you know, a remnant tropical cyclone, essentially, and a cold front moving into the same place. Back to you. That's right, Dr. Postel. A lot of things uh, throwing into the recipe this morning. Thanks. Well, Ada whipped up southwest Florida with heavy rain and storm surge under the cover of darkness. It triggered gusty winds up to 50 miles per hour across the Tampa Bay area. Ada has also brought the fourth highest water level at the St. Petersburg gauge with nearly three and a half feet. So let's t talk more about Ada surge and the coastal impacts on Florida's west coast. We have our own meteorologist, uh, Mike Seidel. He is there. He's been talking to residents this morning. So, Mike, what are some of the residents saying? Well, we just talked to Lenny Coe, who lives here, and you can see what he's dealt with. Fortunately, he didn't have water come in the front door, but he dealt with wind. You know, we had wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour, and it swirls around. And look at his patio and kind of a gazebo out here. Uh, this took on the wind and also water. It's still holding some water. There's the ceiling fan down at the ground. Uh, a lot of the pools out here have uh, taken on a lot of debris. Uh, the ones near the bay, seawater came in and whatever else was in there. You can see he's going to have to clean out the pool before he goes back in it, I would suspect. Right, Lenny? <laughs> and back here, 
we still have a lot of standing water. So it goes to show you that he dealt with uh, the freshwater flooding and the wind, not so much the saltwater surge, but that was out uh, in his front yard, but his house is fine. So again, uh, we always say it could have been a lot worse. He'll get this cleaned up. His house is fine and nobody in this neighborhood was hurt. It's just the fact that, you know, it's, it's a mess. And when water gets in your house, you got to do the remediation and uh, get in there and get that out because uh, the mold and mildew can be a very, very serious health problem. Dr. Postel, what I can tell you right now, it's hot or it seems hot and steamy. In fact, I mentioned I was tired of the heat and humidity to Lenny and he said, yeah, we are too. Uh, they're <laughs> waiting for, they had one cold front. They're, they had one cold front get down here, but uh, temperatures in the upper 60s, but they're ready too, I think, for some cooler weather uh, in the next, uh, at least before Thanksgiving, my gosh. Well, maybe you get a cold front here and there, Mike, but I'm sure you're well aware of the odds of it being below average temperature-wise for the winter in the southeast U.S. Good luck with that. Right. It looks like it's going to be pretty warm. You know that <laughs> as well as anybody. Let's yeah. have a, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, let's have a look now at uh, Ada uh, moving northeastward. Thank you very much, Mike, for that reporting uh, across Florida. This is Ada as it's uh, traversed across the northern part of the Sunshine State, bringing not so sunshiny weather. Uh, it made landfall last night near Cedar Key just after, well, just after 4 a.m. this morning. So in the very early or, uh, hours of this morning as a 50 mile per hour tropical storm, it is now a lot weaker than that. And most of the weather, the bad weather is now even over the Atlantic offshore. There is about where the center is. It may be a bit farther north. It's kind of elongated roughly north of Jacksonville, maybe St. Simons Island, somewhere around there. We're starting to see some lower pressures move in, but that's Really about it. I mean, I'm looking at the radar and the satellite pictures and drier westerly winds are coming into the scene. Jacksonville International on the northwest side of town with a west northwest wind there at about uh, 13 miles per hour. So that's bringing in some better weather from the west. That's good news. Fernandina Beach, even all these coastal locations, their winds are now offshore. So they are weaker and they are in bringing in the better weather. So Systems, all systems are in a green light for better weather in Florida and Georgia as well. But meanwhile, as I mentioned, most of the bad weather is here. Um, there's a front coming in from the northwest that's coming this way. And uh, those two may combine forces a little bit offshore. But uh, some of the western edge of the circulation around Ada may interact with that incoming front and produce some heavy rain along the uh, far eastern sections of North and South Carolina through the next several hours. But then Felicia by tonight and tomorrow morning, gone. I mean, it seems like we've been dealing with Ada forever, and now we can finally see the end. Good yeah, news. yeah, Dr. Pissell, you said it earlier, you're getting the Greek letters mixed up at this point. Uh, but the good news is better weather ahead. Right now, people in Fort Lauderdale, they're doing their best to dry out from Ada.